Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris here, I touch iPods, and in front of me I have a plethora of iPhones. Here we have the iPhone 4, next we have the iPhone 4S, and last but not least we have the brand new iPhone 5. I'm going to be doing a comparison video with all three of these phones, and I'm going to let you guys know about the speed between 3G and 4G, I'll take a look at the maps, the size, the specs, startup speeds, and just all around comparison of which uh, of all the devices to kind of figure out how to help you out which device you want to buy and if you're on the edge you're teetering you don't know which device you want to get for the price hopefully this video will help you out with the four it comes in at 4.5 inches high 2.31 inches wide 0.37 inches deep and 4.8 ounces so that's going to be the heftier, the bigger one of the bunch. Moving on to the iPhone 4S, we have a height of 4.5 inches, a width of 2.31 inches. It is 0.37 inches deep, and it weighs in at 4.9 ounces. So it's lighter than the 4. Moving on to the iPhone 5, we have a height of 4.87 inches, a width of 2.31 inches, a depth of 30 inches, which is a massive drop from the 4. And it weighs in at 3.95 ounces, which once again is a huge, huge drop from the original iPhone 4 as well as the iPhone 4S. All right, so now we're going to take a look just at how the size has gone down and how the height has gone down over the time from the iPhone 4 to the iPhone 5. Now, as you guys can see from the left, once again, this is the iPhone 4. As you can see, it slowly gets thinner and thinner till we reach a point at the iPhone 5 where it is definitely thinner and you can obviously see that it is not as thick as the 4 or the 4S. If we take a look at the bottom of the devices, you guys can see clearly that over here we have the 30 pin dock connector, microphone and a speaker. Same thing here, 30 pin dock connector, a microphone and a speaker. But then on the iPhone 5, we get a little bit of a change. No longer do we get the Apple 30 pin dock connector, but now we get the lightning connector that is smaller, works on both sides, but is incompatible with the previous iPhones, previous iPods, and everything else that used to work with the Apple 30 pin dock connector. As you can also see, the headphone jack has moved from the top of the iPhone 4 and 4S to now be on the bottom of the iPhone 5. Now that is a little bit of a controversy with some people. For me personally, I actually enjoy that it is on the bottom now. If you guys feel differently and like the headphone jack on the top of the iPhones like it was on the previous models before the 5, let me know in a comment down below and let me know why. So you guys can clearly see the difference between the iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, and the iPhone 5. They're stacked in that order with the iPhone 5 being on top. You can clearly see the difference in size. Here with the iPhone 5 on top, you can see the length difference in the new iPhone. You can see how it is longer and how it stretches out from the previous 4 and 4S. You guys can also see here from a side view that the band has changed on the side. You guys can see the two previous silver bands that used to run around the devices is now black on the new black iPhone 5. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the camera on the iPhone 4S and now the I camera on the iPhone 5. You guys can see the layout is a little bit different than it is, oh that's weird, oh, my head. oh that's weird. The layout is a little bit different, you guys can see the camera icon down there. Yes, you do have panorama as well with that. Um, but this one you also, you guys can see the row on the bottom where you have your selection options. They are different, um, just, just a little interface, the user interface is just a little bit different, nothing that's gonna blow your mind or make you wanna buy the five over that, but just a little something extra to notice. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do a speed test of all three devices. Once again, the iPhone 4 is all the way to the left, then we have the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 5. All devices are disconnected from Wi-Fi and are running on Verizon's network. The iPhone 4 and the 4S are both running on 3G, while the iPhone 5 is running on 4G LTE. So now we're going to go ahead and refresh CNN.com and see which phone loads the fastest. One, two, three. All right, so it looks like the iPhone 5 on 4G is done. The iPhone 4S, done. The iPhone 4... It's, it's slacking a little bit. It's trying its hardest. That's all that matters. And it's it's still loading. It's it's trying. It's getting there. All right, it just finished. So you guys can obviously see there's a giant difference in load time between the iPhone 4, 4S, and the iPhone 5. The iPhone 5 is on 4G, yes, but it is just phenomenally faster than the iPhone 4S, especially the iPhone 4. So if you're out there and you're looking for a device that you're going to be using the internet on a lot and you need to have your pages load as fast as possible so you can upload whatever you need to upload as fast as you can or do whatever you really need to do on the internet, the iPhone 5 with Verizon 4G LTE is where you're going to want to go. So in the beginning of this video, we spoke about screen size. Here's a great example of the screen size on the iPhone 5. 
you can see how it stretches up that much more than the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 4. It is much larger and allows you much more content in the screen at once. You guys can see here all the extra stories that you fit in on one screen than you can on the 4S or the 4. All these are all the way zoomed out. You guys can see right here, we're all the way zoomed out on all of the devices. So you're seeing, I believe it's an extra two rows of stories right here than you are on the other devices. So you're getting that much more on your screen at once. The FaceTime camera on the 4S is a VGA quality while the iPhone 5 has a FaceTime camera with a 1.2 megapixel camera and 720p video recording capability. So you're gonna be getting great quality uh, whether you're FaceTiming or whether you're recording a video or a taking a photo using the front facing camera on the iPhone 5. Now something else while we're on that topic, you guys can see on both devices, the iPhone 4 and the 4S, the camera is to the left of the speaker port on the top. Now on the 5, what they went ahead and did is put it above the speaker, uh, the speaker port. They put it up here. You guys can see that little dot. That's the camera on the iPhone 5, the front-facing camera. So just a little change right there, nothing too major, but just something that, once again, is noticeable. Another extra thing on the iPhone 5 is that you have five rows now instead of four on the previous models. In the previous model of the iPhone and in the iPhone 4S, they have the Apple A5 chip. In the new iPhone 5, we have the new Apple A6 chip, which allows for faster user interface when you're scrolling through uh, your photos, whether you're playing a game, whether you're doing whatever you happen to be doing using a, a very intensive application, it'll just work faster. So what we're going to go ahead and do is show you an example of that. We're going to go ahead and load up the game Temple Run and see who loads the game full the fastest. On the count of three, one, two, three. We got them all started at the same time. The iPhone 5 already loaded. The iPhone 4 is pretty close behind. The iPhone 5 is obviously in the lead, but the iPhone 4, as you guys can see, it's lagging behind and it is the last to load. You guys can see the big, big speed difference between the iPhone 5, 4S, and the 4. All right, so now we come down to the most important detail for most people, the price of the device. Now, the iPhone 5 is going to be uh, higher in price, obviously, because it is the newest phone, but I think you guys will be interested in seeing the other prices of the other devices, because this could mean you could be on the edge and be like, oh, I like the specs of this phone, or I like how this phone looks, and this one's lighter, but it's more expensive than the other ones. Which one should I get? Well, the pricing should be able to help you out a little bit on that. If you want to go ahead and you're just looking to get an iPhone, you're just looking to get a baseline iPhone, you just want to have an iPhone, go ahead and go with the iPhone 4 because you can pick up an 8 gigabyte model for free. For free. Yeah, that's nothing. So that's the lowest price. I believe that's an on-contract price, but still, it's a great price just to get it um, if you just want an iPhone. For the iPhone 4S, you can get a 16 gigabyte. They do not have the 8 gigabyte for the 4S. You can get that for $99. I believe that is as well on contract. Uh, you can get that in white or black, just like on the iPhone 4. So you step about $100 to get the iPhone 4S, you get a little bit faster, you get a little bit better display, and obviously you get Siri. Now with the iPhone 5, your price is stepping up a little bit and you're shooting all the way up to $199 for the 16 gigabyte. Now that is a fairly hard price and you're gonna be paying a little bit more after taxes and everything like that, but on the two year plan that you're probably gonna be um, going on, it's, it's not that bad of a price for an iPhone. You can go ahead and pay upwards of $650 just for an unsubsidized price for an iPhone 5. So if you're just looking to get an iPhone, go ahead and go with the iPhone 4 and get it on contract for pretty much free. If you're looking to just, you don't want a 4, maybe you like Siri a lot, maybe you like that feature a lot of having Siri, just knowing that you're gonna answer a question or something like that, and you want a little bit faster phone, and you kind of do care about specs, go ahead and go with the iPhone 4S. If you want the newest, the best technology that's out there right now from Apple, you want the biggest phone they have, the biggest screen, the best display, the fastest processor, go ahead and sell out the cash and pick up the iPhone 5. In my opinion, out of this whole lineup, I obviously have to enjoy the iPhone 5 the most so far. It's just so much faster. It has 4G LTE, which means it's going to be obviously running faster than any other phone, um, any other iPhone that there is, because every other one runs on 3G. And... The price is okay. It's on the, if you get the subsidized price. If not, you're gonna be paying six fifty. Um, but personally, if I had to go ahead and choose and recommend a phone to you guys, I would straight up recommend the iPhone five over the four or the four S. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any other questions, please leave them in a the comment or video response down below. I know I can't cover every single spec, every other little thing that has changed from each device. Some specs might be off, some little things might be off. 
feel free to correct me. Feel free to leave a comment down below. I want to hear back from you guys. I want to hear your opinions. I want to know what you guys have to say as well. I want to, once again, thank you guys for watching this video. More videos with the iPhone 5 to come. Let me know in a comment down below which one you guys would rather have most. The iPhone 4, the iPhone 4S, or the iPhone 5. And if you have one of them and that's the one you like the most, let me know what you have. Do you have the 5, do you have the 4S, or do you have the 4? Let me know in a comment down below. I want to hear back from you guys. I want to hear your reactions and your opinions. So I want to thank you guys once again for watching this video. Favorite, comment, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. A Peace.